Yo, welcome back guys, I'm T-Rex here and we are back with some more Forza Horizon action and yeah, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm again sorry for not able to record my voice in the previous three videos well, it was all messy after the recent 3 Windows 11 update I talked with the Asus customer case as well and after I got the pass update, it's still messing up with my laptop microphone even though right now I'm, I'm recording through my cell phone but anyways without further ado let's drive this beautiful Jaguar here yep uh, I got this car from the auction while I wasn't recording the game but anyways uh, we, we have unlocked the new horizon story chapter which is I guess this time we're gonna drive some British sprites going through the history of those companies it's going to be a long video so I hope you guys can brush yourself oh my god <laughs> we went off road just to, just to not knock that guy out of the way but anyway we control the car we back on the roads And yeah, uh, as I said, it's going to be a long video because I will be uploading all the, you know, the chapters for this story, like 10 of 10, in, in one shot. I hope you guys like, will like it. And yep, uh, before uh, reaching there, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, I have uh, I have put it down in the description uh, as well and also you can see it on the screen it's instagram.com slash Alice and uh, yes uh, also if you guys are new here and if you haven't subscribed yet or you are uh, a viewer that has viewed my videos before but haven't subscribed yet you can subscribe right here for more for the horizon videos and probably will do more other games in the future but for now I'll, i want to complete this whole story like what for the horizon 4 has to offer us and after that i think i'll, I'll go for the lara croft trilogy that has been given free by the epic games have you aboard? So maybe Let's soon I'll, I'll play La Lara Croft. Let's do it. Yes, how have you guys been doing lately? Well, I wasn't, well, you weren't able to hear from me in the previous videos. From Aston Martin to McLaren and Bentley. Great Britain is home to over a century of autumn okay, so excellence. Our first drive is in the Aston Martin. Welcome to British Racing Green, a documentary celebrating that history. I don't know why, but Martin it's keeping frame. The, the game is keeping frames. Or maybe it could be a recording feature. British engineering and Italian design. Damn man, old school and still doing 230 km per hour. It's good man. Vantage featured side draft carburetors. But that can this old school can do drift. Find out if we get some good corner. Oh my god, that was my pack. Just drive straight into that car, man. <laughs> the clean line well, I'm sorry, the car. For ruining this car's bodywork.
Well, drifting, I think it has potential to do drift, but let's see if you can pull out a drift here. Oh, Michael. Here we go, man. This car would form the basis of EV range, with later cars and some design in many ways. Nifty corners, I guess. Ever achieve the sheer iconic perfection of the Vantage. In 200 meters, turn left. Turn left. For all of its beauty and engineering perfection, only 65 of these beautiful machines would ever be built. If you own one, you own a piece of British history. In 200 meters, you will arrive at your destination. The last few beetles with this old school and finish here with this old boy. Cinema, the classic Aston Martin. What are we getting now? A new DB was oh, the chapter Harry hasn't finished yet. And second century. we have the DB11 is the first travel further. In the history, successor to that legacy. It's 2016 Aston Martin DB11. The short answer is yes. It's bold, responsive, and agile, with perhaps the best GT chassis in the world. And listen to it. Looks good. And what's the challenge here? We have to stay above 161 km per hour. Oh, we can do that. Able to hit 60 miles an hour in 3.5 seconds, the DB11's 5.2 litre twin turbo V12 boasts a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. But man, it, it, it really feels you know, challenging. Like just a few seconds or a few minutes ago, I was driving the old school test. The old school type handling, the DB11 the stiff, is not uh, the stiff suspensions and everything. It's trying to be. It's a and now driving this this hypercar and it's an Aston Martin. this speed. It's quite chilling, I can say. Even though I'm, I'm, I'm driving on, uh, driving what, what I'm driving now, I'm driving the, the keyboard. Still, it, it feels, you know, like you're driving this fast. A little bit of off roading, not bad. Importantly, I think the DB11 proves that it's Aston Martin skipping from and I, I don't know why, but beautiful cars. maybe can't too wait. much pressure on the CPU or coding, maybe. Beautiful as they are, Aston Martins are only one anyway. of many cars. Let's go guys, we back to 3 star in the first chapter itself, 2 minutes 17 seconds and the targets were, uh, in the target was 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, we have achievement unlocked. Second century achievement has been unlocked on Steam. And I guess it's going to be the same in Xbox as well. This is shaping up nicely. Time for a change of pace, though. At least at first. The next segment is about Land Rover. Oh, and we'll a Land Rover. Out with the Type Three. Land. Rover Type 3 
we have to reach the destination there is no more challenge or no additional challenge the British and sports utility bridge, yep, vehicle. can say there is no additional what challenge we just have to drive to the Solid destination almost 6 kilometers to target it's 5 minutes but I guess this this target doesn't make any sense because Let's see, it feels very slow now though, after driving the DB11. Super slow. Man, it, it feels like one of that, you know, Call of Duty missions where you have to drive this Jeep kinda or the landlord, uh, this Type 3 kinda vehicle. Especially the, the tire at, and on the hood, it, it gives that vibe, you know. Those Call of Duty vibes. Belgium, South Africa. Even Australia and New Zealand. With a robust chassis and signature Land Rover engineering. Well, it's going to be one hell of a long drive with this Land Rover. Options, like seat box protectors and cubby boxes. That trend continued, and by 1982, Land Rover were offering the county spec Type 3. Leisure drivers could choose from such luxuries as all cloth seats, soundproofing, and tinted glass. The trend was increasingly clear, and the future of the Land Rover no. was starting to take shape. If squinted, you could already see tough, the shape man. of the first sports I, I, I barely Rainbow. made that turn. While the stock Type 3 would never be particularly fast uphill, there is almost no hill that it couldn't climb, or down for that matter, if you put a proper winch on it. It looks like uh, 1978, it's taking us to the query. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It only had 1,892 yep, miles on the clock when it was auctioned into private hands. And it was in perfect condition. It would be. After all, she trained as a mechanic in the 1940s and will likely remain the only royal able to strip and rebuild an engine. Turn left. Along with the Range Rover, others would follow. It, it really feels weird you know, after driving those hypercars in the game, and then you are given this as a challenge, but none of them and then you can't even turn at easy turns. The Type 3 was arguably the first sports utility vehicle. Good what? <laughs> evolution of and evolutions of Land Rovers. We are going into the, the Land Rover Bowler. Did you say it? Yep, uh, it's Bowler. Nemesis. It sports a turbocharged e XR Nemesis. Bowler Nemesis EXR. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to say. Man, I I hate this this uh, challenge, you know, in particular in this area because it's very difficult to gain the skill. Especially where you are when you're not a stunt driver. And there we go. We messed up. I don't think we can block this target. 
We cannot. Maybe we have to redo it again. I'm not sure. Yep, we are too bad. Not even a one star man. If you want to see what the Type 3 would be like if it ever stopped doing important things, this is it. And it's beautiful. This is an all-terrain supercar. I'm not no impressed with this, this. score, man. But that's what you get when you build an Shall we do again? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's do it again, man. Yep, uh, I did it again, and uh, I'll talk to you, uh, I'll see you guys in... Uh, Few minutes once I'm near to finish this thing again. So, yep, wait for me a bit. And there you go, we are back. I already did 96k, but can we all cannot make it to the three star? But it's okay, I'm done for now. I don't want to do it again. That's the only fair description for this. One hundred and ten K. When you build an SUV, we, we, we take those. DNA. We take those, man. I'm just too bad when it comes to stunt or skill points, I guess. <laughs> Especially doing the talent in that area. Uh, Oh my god, this ad. I guess I have to. You guys have to wait for a bit and I'll skip to the next part. Here we go, next chapter. So, what's it? The, okay, it's the Lord of Spirit. We are, we're gonna drive the Lotus in the next chapter. Let's do it. You're enjoying yourself. I don't know about the, why I just clicked you on the on the select chapter. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. This time Let's move on. We are drawing this old school lotus again. But oh my my. That was a quick acceleration there. Wasn't expecting that <laughs> Yes, we have to Limited began listen to in British Engineering the big in an old barn. The first carefully cars were what this hit. guy has to offer us, what this bad boy has to offer us. They began to actually build the cars themselves. The Elan Sprint showed exactly what they intended to do. Built around a steel backbone with a fiberglass chassis, the Sprint weighed in at a meagre 687 kilos parked on the curb. On the road, this translated into brilliant agility and fantastic performance. Actually, it, it, it really feels different, you know, from the Aston Martin uh, that we drove at the very, on the very first chapter. And this is, is quite quick, you know, the turns feels easy. Did you see that? How I made that turn so easy, man. Widely hailed as one of the greatest sports cars of the 1960s, the Elan would be closely studied and it, it, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm driving the car on water. As the Mazda MX-5. Hmm. The Elan has all the energy, style, and enthusiasm you would expect. Pretty interesting engineering, I guess. So much so that they put it in the name.
The Elan Sprint was a financial as well as an engineering success for Lotus, validating their approach to design and resulting in a whole family of... Is it Exige? We Lotus Exige? Yeah, yeah, it is. brings us to this. The Lotus Exige. It's heavier oh, than the Elan was the, the one that you drove just much, much before this one. Faster. The yellow car. The yellow Lotus. Touch the pedal, the Exige responds with instant, relentless acceleration. You don't know. It has quite a good acceleration. It goes zoom. To 60 time of just like Rebecca said. And a top speed 0 to 60 in just 3.8 seconds. That's fast. Tuning, the Exige is uncompromising. So I guess 0 to 60 is within the miles per hour. And there's no power steering, so you can really feel the road. A genuinely thrilling drive, and one that isn't afraid to demand you take it seriously. 400 meters, turn left. Turn left. In one word, Lotus is about okay, that was experience. Good. Uncompromising, challenging. This is a car that demands you drive it well. But I'm not that familiar with this whole map, so you know, especially when I don't have the tra drive lines enabled, it's just the brake lines that I have enabled. So I have to keep watching on the minimap to see the um, the route of the race or challenge, whatever you say. So sometimes it's like you know, I, I by looking at the minimap. I might miss a turn, or maybe I, I just look just like this. I just bumped into a car, a traffic car. New cars in 2020. Lotus looks set to push the benchmark. Well, experience sports we, we, we take those two stars win, man. I guess the three star streak is already ended. We cannot dream it anymore, I guess. But if we ain't gonna lose the hope. It was fast, man. The Lotus XC was fast. Well, uh, I would say the first Lotus uh, I had driven in, in the game uh, was in Need for Speed. I'm not sure which game. I mean, which series was the uh, Need for Speed? I guess it should be. That's a joke. We've all seen what you've been up to. That's the old Need for Speed world. You'll see why when you get there. Having the Lotus Exige. I'm not sure, man. I forget it. Anyway. We don't know. We're drawing the Jaguar. When it is safe to do so. Holy shit. Uh, man, this, this feels so weird. <laughs> I cannot even control this car again. Yeah, but, um, I, as I said, I got this car from the auction. So, also, this one is is the uh, tuned one, not the stock. I have installed uh, the pre tune from the uh, from other players, as you know. Forza Horizon uh, gives you that facility where you can uh, share your tuning with other people. So I just got one from that place and it's pretty quick as you can see man but anyway we we got our hands back on the check again well Rebecca says that we're gonna see the new car or whatever we're driving this right here okay so we're here what's next what's going on um where's the intro man well, I'm right here, or oh, I see you have to stop. I thought, you know, the cutscene will will start automatically. Ford, but never mind. What most this? American of cars. Oh, we're but drawing the Ford Escort. Don't tell me we, we have to do the. And more than that, the Escort has become for many synonymous with Group B. In the, the off-roading session, Ford has yeah. embraced that destiny so firmly that they've begun their own championships to find new drivers. 
Drivers for cars like the RS-1800. This was a car designed exclusively okay, for rallying, with a powerful fuel-injected 1790cc Cosworth BDE engine. Oh my god, I told you I'm, I'm bad at this one. I told you I'm bad at this one. Anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna redo the whole thing. Navigation rules required that all cars entered into the group. This was a car designed explicitly for rallying, with a powerful fuel-injected 1790cc Cosworth BDE engine. Okay, so the corner goes good again. rules required that all cars entered into the group be production so Ford no. them. God. I slipped again but what one do that you start thing we, we just finish this race man. To victory oh. after victory this track on almost every continent and across every Somehow I just cannot be on the road. So I just keep going outside of the third track. But man, my man, finally it's finished. I can see things line. The RS-1800 brought home 17 World Rally finished, man. victories for Ford. Um, God. I guess we are. Uh, we're driving under the Ford. Ford I think it's to design a better one. RS. The RS two hundred evolution yep. was their answer. A purpose-built rally car designed to do one thing: win Group B. I'll, I'll drive carefully, man. I promise. I drive, I drive carefully. Turbocharged Ford Cosworth BD no more going out of the dirt road. The RS200 had perhaps the Wait, best suspension quick. platform of any car of its era. I think that's okay. That bit of the chassis was going out of track is okay. And the massive Ford parts bin was raided to give the car that iconic look. I like it's pretty hard, you know, to control the car with the keyboard. But while the car had potential, turbo lag at low RPM and a poor power to weight ratio meant that it never placed better I'm not sure if you, you know there's there anyone who has uh, weird the this keyboard the 80s, I mean the computer keyboard or whatever the laptop keyboard you can say Fortunately, Ford built over with the you know how the uh, requirements for group B. So you piano keys work you know if you're the lucky. pressure it feels the harder you press, the higher the sounds uh, comes out. You know, just the same way, you know, someone should have built a keyboard where for the game, for, for gaming purpose, like the harder you push the, uh, the, the arrow keys, the higher the uh, accent should be taken by the game. Anyways. Whatever. I think I'm just going too much into this thing. You're back. You know, I really like this. With voices, man. <laughs> Thought I'd want to drive it for too long. Squeeze yourself in there and let's see just how fast you can make it go, which won't be too fast. Sure, but I hope okay, this one is right? quick, man. The Peel P50 has the dubious the honor of being 20. the smallest production P50, car in the world. P50, not P20, my a bad. A one-door micro car coupe. Oh my god. A 42cc air-cooled engine. What is this? Capable of a heinous 38 miles an hour. And a handle, so you can pick it up and carry it with you when you get to work. And keep in mind that this is the production version. And it is the production version, and the product in the MCC is the prototype has a single wheel in the front, so it's just almost like a motorbike. 
In 2010, though, production restarted at Sutton and Ashfield. So, if you'd like to own the modern incarnation of this, I suppose you can. Okay, we got a world spin, we leveled up to 55. Give me something nice, man. I just want something nice, not a home. If I remember correctly, I haven't got anything nice from the wheel spin, especially the wheel spin that I get um, directly from this uh, story chapters or events. Hey there! How about a car with some but yeah, uh, by the and some wheel spin, speed. I remember I think we can do one more um, road car. wheel so spin video, this. and also I have stacked up. Uh, many super wheel spins as well. The track and oh, we're drawing the block to run F1. Wait, I think it's F1. F1? Oh, wait, 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 I, I forgot the name, man. They set out to create the finest sports car the world has ever seen. By 1993, yeah, it is called F1. And the honestly fantastic F1 was the result. 106 would be built across all variants and it remains one of the oh, and very this car even even ever made. felt so quick the F1 has in in the early need for speed era you know i have driven this car in need for speed 2 se if anyone remembers here the f1 is a naturally aspirated supercar one of the fastest in the world in fact everything about this car is innovative from the carbon fiber that game, the need for a speed 2 SD was, man, damn, in those days it was so good, like, I used to play, like, in the night, in the evening, every time, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm coming back from the schools, I just, I just come back home and just, sit in front of a computer, start the need for speed 2 SD and then play continuously for 2, 3, 4 hours until mom's calls for a dinner. So deeply ingrained in this machine. Well, that, that was a, it to Mans, a, a quick cheating. And I just tried your forehand and finished it. Racing machines. They won. So, with something oh like the my F1 god, the to, sexy P1. Where do you go next? Well, you throw the book away again. The McLaren P1. Is the answer to the McLaren P1. F1. A hybrid electric sports car that stands head and shoulders above the F1. The P1 GTR will hit 60 miles an hour in 2.4 seconds. That's 0 0.7 Whoa. seconds faster than that, F1. That, that's, that's quick, man. It, it, it's, it's already getting out of control for me. The car's blistering performance <laughs> is delivered Look at that by RPM needle, man. It's so unstable. By a ECU electric motor and it is this flickering... System. And they do up and down, up and down, so quick, man. Turn around when it is safe to do so. And this, these cars, these exotic cars are, are just too quick for someone to find it. Remember those problems with turbo lag? Because Can we do the three star? Oh. Not sure uh, how much, uh, like, what we do we need for the three star. No turbo lag, just talk. And because it's okay. a hybrid, well, I guess we got the three star anyways. Running on batteries alone, that's 6.2 miles. A bit more if you're going downhill. Skip, skip, skip. We got. Are we unlocked a jacket for the player to wear?
maybe in the next video I'll, I'll wear that newly unlocked jacket and hopefully you guys will be spotted okay what about this like car is it cars. did alex ever tell you the story of what we got up to in colorado there was a sleeper car competition you see let's just say no one was ready a sleep for sunday car competition what what, what is it he talking about exactly Lotus never quite let go of the upgrade game. So in addition to She's building Lotus never. They upgraded cars from oh, other marks. Okay. The Lotus Carlton was one such aftermarket upgrade. Oh, so it's in Lotus Carlton Vauxhall Saloon and turned it into a supercar. From the outside, there are a few I guess Lotus has did some Upgradation to the already existing the bonnet, that's where the car. Starts. That's what she's saying. Yes. Engine capacity was increased to 3.6 liters, and twin Garrett T25 turbochargers were added. Because this car has a turbocharger. And new crankshafts were forged by Opel and machined in Germany. It is machined in Germany. Take the third exit. The tires were widened, and the tire compound from the Lotus Esprit was used. To handle camber change issues, they put in the self-leveling suspension. Oh what is this traffic, man? The only upgrade they didn't put in was an electric. Where are this traffic going from? All of this resulted in the Lotus Carlton, designated Type 104. Did it just because I, I didn't know? miles per hour supercar. Round to the circle and the main shortcut. Only so went to the wrong way and to the main route. They've become something of a <sighs> modern. Who is this traffic? The Lotus Carlton was an example of how to turn a saloon into a supercar, but that's not the only thing Lotus got up to. In 1979, Chrysler approached huh. Lotus to create a strict rally the Christ, version of their Sunbeam the... three-door Oh my god, my pronunciation Lotus, is this company. Lotus, as you might imagine, rather enjoyed the challenge. So they approached Lotus and they, they said they want to be a ready car. Everything that matters. They stiffened I see. the suspension, but you know what? I have a big issue widened the transmission to staying on the dirt floor so if I see any little bit of chance where I can skip the route I'll do it I'll take the shortcut and finish this so give me a 10 second to get back on the road and I think I can take this advantage for me hopefully <laughs> Man, thankfully I didn't crash when you do that tree <laughs> There was a huge, huge soccer. Like if I if I drive carefully and kept it on the dirt track, I can promise you, I wasn't able to clear this challenge with three star. But now I can. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was close, man. <laughs> that was close. I thought I wasn't be able to, you know, get him to the road, but got back to the road just on time. It almost makes you wonder if Lotus should do more conversions. It's a silly question, actually. Lotus should do more conversions. In fact, I'll call them right now. There is almost one minute. You know, we are one minute ahead of the, the target given. I think the target was 2.30 for the three star and we finished it in one minute and 33 seconds. Oh, all right, there will spin. Oh, there we are. Right I guess we are now left with the last three chapters, so let's see.
what Forza has to offer us. Or you can say what Rebecca will give us to drive. I honestly think these might be. Oh, we're trying to check where is the left right man. And the story of how it came about is, well, really British. Get in the car and let's get this segment. Jaguar is a bit of a favourite of mine. The company is almost a hundred years old. Oh, yeah, I remember. Now I remember the Lotus Axis that I was talking about. I, I first drove it in the game, and the game was uh, the Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. Yep, I remember now. And, and yet, uh, it's E type, not F type, my bad. The F type is the, I think, the new generation one. It is E type, the old generation. Games and TV shows. Unlike some later cars in the mark, it wasn't just looks though. The E type was. Well, Rebecca says this car was praised by the Enzo Ferrari himself. And stopped on innovative four wheel brakes that were better than anything Ferrari or Porsche or even Mercedes Benz had. And it had a better full four wheel brakes. Better than Mercedes Benz, BMW, etc. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Anyone who owns an E-Type will tell you that the key to their reliability is to drive. I guess regularly. this is this is my first this clean. Clean race or clean drive to the destination without going off road or pressing into anything. About two and a half thousand were built, and they're a common sight at auto shows, and surprisingly reasonably priced. All in all, an almost so which, perfect Jaguar. Uh, the new generation Jaguar are we driving now? The E-Type was the successor to the Le Mans winning D-Type. But what would that look like if Jaguar designed it today? Yes, we got the F-Type. In 2013, Jaguar answered that question with the F-Type Project 7, a spiritual successor to the E-Type, and designed from the ground up to be the purest, most enjoyable Jaguar yet. Oh, plus it's an open roof. The car's heritage is proudly displayed in the gorgeous D-type curves and the distinctive aero hunch behind the driving position. But like the E-type, it's not just a pretty face. I guess for this one I will drive with this view inside the Powered by a five liter I'm not able to see day. the with a full traffic cars. Body, it's blisteringly fast. I'm not sure why, but I literally am not able to predict the traffic cars here. Miles an hour. A car as beautiful as this must surely have been a carefully authored design. Actually, it started as a sketch by designer Cesar I mean, what's this traffic, man? Why are they coming into my lane? Uh, I finished this, this event and asked him what it was. in this view and it, it looks very you know, I can see the car which is ahead of me here anyway I, I see a roundabout there and I know what to do I'm not going to do the whole roundabout <laughs> damn we didn't craze, man. We didn't craze anywhere. Just straight right through the roundabout. And still not able to... Wait, did you get the three star or not? Is it a three star? No! Damn. 
time I guess it is because uh, the, the very first time I crashed on the highway you know crashed on the divider the railing and the lamps lamp poles well it's okay we take those two stars man cannot help the second last chapter we're almost of done the story but we saved the good stuff and we're driving Mini Cooper. In the most British car of anyway, yeah, guys, uh, let me know which uh, British pride do you like the most in the comment section, there is one car built in and which uh, British car that you liked in the Further Horizon 4. Just comment down in the comment section. And I'll, I'll, I'll replay you personally in the, in the comments that what is my opinion on the car you liked. Or maybe I'll say which one do I like. So don't forget to comment your favorite British car company name. Just comment down in the comment box just below the video. I almost forget that term, but Minis took the first, second, and third positions. They were all disqualified because they had dimming headlamps. Not because they were winning. For a moment, in I just. The car of the I had my attention somewhere else and almost missed that turn. The Mini came second. It was beaten by the Model T Ford. That's fair, I suppose. 5.3 million minis would be sold. I guess this is the old school Mini Cooper and now Rebecca will give us the new generation of Mini Cooper, I guess. And then yeah, she gave us this off-roading Mini Cooper, man. So we are going off-roading, I guess. We're going to do some off-roading. In Mini Cooper, Countryman has its eyes on something a little tougher. The deserts and rough terrain of the Dakar, for starters. A wit once said that the only thing mini in this monster was the pedal. That's rather missing the point, I think. The X rayed Countryman is much, much bigger. We are in the query again. Not so yes, my favorite place in the game, you could call it a but we'll try not to press anywhere here, man. Because this Mini Cooper is quite, quite fast. When Mini's X division set out to and they had one yeah, goal. just what I thought. Man, I, I had this in mind that I, I might crash somewhere, and I crashed. Just then. Well, I'm sorry. We have to do it again. We just have to restart it. The deserts and rough terrain of the Dakar, for starters. A wit once said that the only thing mini in this monster was the pedal. That's rather missing the point, I think. This time, I will make no mistake. Is much, much bigger than the Mini Cooper. It has to be. A stage of the Dakar demands literally tons of gear. You could call it a tank. It does rather sound like one. Well, this turn here, this turn, like if you're not careful, you either either press on that rock on the right side, or you press on the, the left side. If you're going too fast, they had one goal because it has some bumps, and you go and they did. Every year. air. From 2012 to 2012. And then you won't be able to make a quick turn to either press either on the right side or on the left side. In 
100 meters. Turn right. It's designed to be driven for two weeks over deserts and badlands, five kilometers above sea level. Guys, can we can we do the three star here? On a nice bit of dry <sighs> Not without going off road. I mean, out of the track. The heritage of a car like the Mini is more than who owns the keys to the shop. I fully expect to see Minnie's wings flying for another century. After a long time, man, we, we got those three stars. And we are now at the final chapter of the story. And I'm not sure what are we going to drive next. What could it be, man? The Bentley, too. This is quite the story. Bedley at Le Mans in the 1930s. Gentlemen racers, heroic driving, and a personal Very well, it's hero the of mine. Take good care of the Both of them are mine. So I'm not sure if you're gonna go back in the past and will you be cooking with any old generation Bentley? Not sure. We'll see. So it has a damage meter. Perhaps the best so we try to drive it carefully. For almost a century, every Bentley was hand-built to exacting standards. So at the beginning of the 21st century, when Bentley revealed their first mass-produced car, there were a great many questions. The car was the Continental GT, an elegant grand tourer that combined a racetrack pedigree with exquisite style and all the power you could need. Well, this one is quick too. Just the move to mass quick production has done nothing look into the dashboard. The 2017 and Super Sport is the tab key again and again. Two times. Man, these this roundabout shortcuts are, are quite handy, man. It saves. I mean, not. You won't have that much of time saved, but you know, even a few seconds is helpful. Like the target is, is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, and we are already, we already threw an, around like 140 seconds, 1 minute and 40 seconds, and still 3 kilometers to go. But never forget, Bentley's pedigree is racing. And the Bentley Continental embraces that. Also, it says on the target, so I guess we will have one more car after it needs to drive. Because generally, if it's the, the, the final scene, then it, you know, just before the target, it would always have return like one one star, for well, one star the target is this, for well, three star the target is this. But it, for now, it just only says target. So I guess we'll drive one more car after this. There we go. Today, Bentley means modern, peerless luxury and elegance. But that's far from the full story. Today, the Bentley means modern. I see, man. A century oh, ago, just like meant something else entirely. It meant Le Mans. In we have a cool did we were scared, and we got this old generation Bentley to drive. It was a 4.5 liter supercharged. A 4.5 liter supercharged Bentley boy Birkin. It posted the fastest time on the day, but it failed to finish. <laughs> well, what? What's matter? Supercharged, man. I mean, I got it. They got the fastest 
time of the day, but well, it doesn't count if you cannot finish the race. He handed the day to the Bentley Sixes, a gentleman racer indeed. Uh, this one feels slow, man. Sir Henry knew he didn't have anything to prove. In 1929, the adventurer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Had already driven but we are driving on sand with this old Bentley. Setting distance, speed, and endurance records. This cannot be any more hilarious than this one. The Bentley's performance so annoyed Ettore Bugatti that he called it the world's fastest lorry. I guess we cannot. Cannot do this, John. Can. Not, not. Man. Not man. Just a few milliseconds. Just by a few milliseconds in the post. Which is more than enough to buy a Veyron and a racing Well, car. anyway, uh, that's it for this this part of the Forza Horizon 4 video. Or finished with this chapter. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye, take care. Like I told them, can't make a film about car culture around here without you in it, can they? I'll let you know if they need you back.